uh, financial global safety net. Let me close with a more general reflection. Many of the circumstances we're living are not unprecedented. Um, we have seen wars and pandemics, inflationary pressures, financial instability in the past. Let us keep in mind and learn the lessons of the past, the lessons that history teaches us, and not forget that peace and multilateralism, as opposed to war and fragmentation, have brought progress and prosperity to millions of people all around the world. And I think this allows us today to close with a message of confidence to markets and citizens. These meetings conclude with an enhanced commitment by members to coordinate our economic policies, to reinforce our global financial safety net, and to work together in a constructive manner to deliver on our shared roadmap as we start the road to Marrakesh. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Nadia. Uh, I want to start by uh, commending you for doing a fabulous job uh, chairing the IMFC. Uh, it was reflected by quite a number of the uh, members during their interventions uh, uh, that uh, having uh, women in charge <laughs> helps reach consensus. Uh, I also want to recognize uh, your team. Uh, you rallied the membership at a very challenging moment over the past year, and we know that we have a lot of work to do. So a great force for good, uh, my, my deepest appreciation uh, for it. Uh, I am uh, uh, regretting there is no chair statement, but as you said, what we have is, uh, uh, sorry, we have no communique, but as you said, we have a chair statement that captures a very significant agreement among finance ministers and central bank uh, governors uh, based on a frank and productive uh, discussion. As we talk through the ongoing impacts of the shocks of the past, uh, we had the pandemic, Russia's war, uh, we also talked about the resilience we are building for the future. And I, I took from the meeting a can-do attitude, and this is what matters. Uh, broad agreement in many areas, you talked about that. The need to continue to fight uh, the fight against inf inflation, to safeguard financial stability. The need to work together now on steps that can boost growth potential in the years ahead and the need to support our uh, vulnerable members. Uh, I am very uh, heartened by the support for the global policy agenda we have represented, for the uh, support for the IMF's mission, and uh, our standing at the heart of the global financial uh, safety net. Uh, we have been uh, leaning forward in this uh, multiple crisis. Uh, since the start of the pandemic, we have approved close to 300 billion in new financing for 96 countries, and we all know that has never happened before in the history of the fund. Uh, we also uh, have been working on uh, constantly uh, improving our toolkit, tuning it to better support vulnerable countries, as we have done with the Food Shock Window and the Resilience and Sustainability uh, Trust. Uh, as we discussed, there is an urgent need uh, to beef up the resources of the Poverty Reduction and Growth Trust. It is a tried and tested instrument to provide zero interest rate support to low-income uh, countries with demand at a record level and interest rates being high. Uh, if we don't secure additional resources, poor countries may not get the support they need. Uh, we have been calling for uh, better off countries uh, to uh, close the funding gap. It is $4.7 billion for loan resources, $1.6 billion in subsidy uh, resources, and uh, uh, quite a number of them step forward already. Um, I am so very grateful uh, to, to the countries. Uh, uh, I want to extend my deepest gratitude to those that spoke in this round. There were many that did uh, support it before, and I know there would be many to support us in the future. But this time, Belgium, China, Ireland, Italy, Japan, 
Korea, Luxembourg, Portugal, Saudi Arabia, Switzerland, uh, the UK, uh, and uh, uh, in, in, in that sense, uh, I, I want to stress this is for PRGT, it is for RST, and also for, uh, for capacity development. Uh, we have narrowed the uh, subsidy resource gap, and we basically are closing the loan uh, gap. And I am very optimistic that we would get the job done uh, by uh, Marrakesh. Uh, IMFC also supported the uh, tangible progress we made on debt restructuring. I want to echo what Nadia said about the Global Sovereign uh, Debt Roundtable. Uh, it is creating uh, a, uh, a framework uh, that um, uh, I am confident would help us uh, to do much better uh, in the future, and it is a necessity for the countries and the high uh, level of, uh, of debt. Uh, we reached a common understanding on the road, the M MDBs can play, that was an uh, 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 outstanding issue, uh, by providing uh, positive net flows, and so we have uh, identified what the fund can do more uh, on information provision and how we can uh, work on a comparability of treatment. Uh, so uh, let me let me uh, say it. This is uh, about principles, but principles when they are put in practice, they mean that countries like Zambia, Ghana, Ethiopia, they can see resolution of their uh, uh, debt issues uh, uh, faster. Uh, finally, I, we cannot forget that um, we have a deadline this year with the 16th quarter review. Uh, and I was very encouraged uh, by what I heard from the membership. We are committed to successfully uh, complete the review. Uh, as we look forward to uh, Marrakesh, uh, there would be plenty to do. There may be new surprises. Uh, we now know that we are in a fast-moving, shock-prone world, but we have the unity of the membership uh, for us to work together to solve problems as they come. Thank you very much. Great, thank you very much, uh, First Vice President and Managing Director. We'll now turn to you for your um, questions. Thank you. Um, let's go over here, women, women in the uh, white jacket. Thank you, Paula Escalada from FN News. Um, we see there is no communique, but do you feel any, any approach uh, between the countries if you compare this meeting with the previous ones? And you also mentioned the poverty reduction and growth facility. <coughs> how, ca how can we ensure this vehicle keeps helping low-income countries? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Should I take that one? Or? Well, I, th I think that as the, as the war goes on, uh, obviously the impact on the economic situation is felt uh, throughout the world. And uh, the discussions have been constructive. Uh, there was agreement on almost the whole communique, the only element not uh, bringing a consensus, precisely the language that we had agreed in Bali, la leaders had agreed in Bali uh, to refer to the war. So I think that the encouraging element here is the uh, unanimous agreement on the core issues of the IMFC, and in particular, on the need to ensure that the global financial safety net works for most vulnerable countries. Mm -hmm. All members uh, that have spoken up, I think Kristalina, all of them referred to the need to ensure that the fund is adequately funded so that there is a, a, a capability and ability to support countries. Uh, and there are two uh, lines of work that I think where we have made progress in the course of the week. First of all, in the uh, endowment of the Poverty Reduction uh, and Growth uh, Trust, uh, as well as the Sustainability and Resilience Trust, which are instrumental for supporting low-income countries and also middle-income countries in ensuring that they are more resilient going forward in the areas of health, in the areas of, of climate change, etc. And the second line of work is this debt relief part, where on top of progress on the, uh, on the common framework under the G20 umbrella, there was this uh, common uh, sovereign debt roundtable, which brought together the two Bretton Woods institutions plus the G20, uh, I think uh, in a very constructive environment, 
uh, key stakeholders, private creditors, and, um, and some of the countries that the managing director has mentioned. And there was a, a renewed commitment to making progress and providing debt relief to these countries as soon as possible. Okay, um, let's go right here. Gentleman uh, in the black uh, jacket. Thank you, Julie. My name is Godfrey Mutiswa. I'm uh, editor of CNBC Africa in Johannesburg. Uh, the first question I'll address to the chair around the need for reform of uh, the IMF and increasing the voice of uh, the continent. The perception continues uh, that uh, the continent, continent continues to be marginalized. Uh, your comment around that. MD, uh, you spoke about uh, debt restructuring. Uh, we know you have identified a number of African countries, I think more than 20, that are near or in danger of debt distress. I wanted to know, one, if you have got a target in terms of reaching an agreement on resolution. Zambia has been waiting for it more than a year. Yep. And then secondly, if you have uh, perhaps a number on the number of countries uh, that might need debt restructure this year. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, as the managing director already said, I think the, the words and the tone we heard today is encouraging on the quota review. There was a, a positive uh, approach on the need for the fund to be appropriately resourced and also for the uh, voices of the different participants to be uh, well balanced. I think the, the language uh, and the, the tone, the approach in this meeting has been particularly encouraging and we will uh, work hard to make as much progress as possible uh, as soon as possible. Uh, and I uh, think also that there cannot be a stronger voice than having the annual meetings in Marrakesh. <laughs> so we will do our utmost to deliver in the road to Marrakesh so that it is a successful annual meeting that works in particular for Africa. Uh, thank you for your uh, questions. Uh, I just want to add on the issue of uh, uh, representation that we have to uh, relentlessly work towards giving more voice. And there are many ways in which countries get more voice. Uh, of course, the basics is quotas. The uh, problem for uh, many small economies, especially poor small economies, is that their share in the world economy is such that uh, it does not, it may even threaten them to lose quotas rather than gain quotas, given that Unfortunately, a dangerous divergence is bringing some of these countries down rather than uh, them going up. Uh, so on that, we do have a, an agreement in principle, and I hope it will translate into the package that these countries will be protected. If there are any shifts, they're not going to be the ones uh, to lose uh, uh, voice, to lose quotas. Uh, but also we need to think of, of engaging countries in a way that they can speak for themselves. For example, one of the uh, innovations uh, in the uh, uh, Global Sovereign Debt Roundtable is that the debtor countries have equal seating around that uh, new table. They can speak for themselves, they can speak on behalf of uh, others. Uh, to your question on uh, debt restructuring, uh, right now we have, as you know, we have uh, the, the case of Zambia. Well, let me start from Chad that is resolved. Zambia, Ethiopia, Ghana. We also have some middle income countries, Sri Lanka, uh, Suriname, where there is a, uh, a burden of debt that requires restructuring. I very much hope that we would take proactively steps to prevent the need from restructuring by reprofiling that early, by providing financial support to countries so they can step up uh, economic activities. Uh, and then in this case, uh, we would avoid a more massive uh, debt restructuring process. We have to be, uh, of course, uh, uh, prepared. Should global conditions worsen, uh, imagine a further tightening of financial conditions that increases the burden on these countries. Uh, but my, I have been uh, speaking about that a lot. Please, let's act before uh, the situation becomes uh, dire. 
Uh, and the fund will continue to work with this group of 20 countries, 20 or so countries you mentioned, so we avoid getting to a point when restructuring uh, uh, is the only way uh, out. Okay, very good. We have time for one last question. Let's go to the middle of the room. Um, woman in the gray uh, blazer right in the front. Yes, thank you. Hi, hi. Uh, Sophie Xiang uh, from 21st Century Business Herald, uh, China. Um, uh, talking about uh, helping the um, uh, developing country and uh, emerging markets, uh, my question is about IMF's new lending facility, the RST. Mm -hmm. uh, we know it's already in operation. Uh, so how do you assess the progress now? Mm -hmm. uh, will more country uh, on other in institutions will join in, uh, as you mentioned, uh, a lot? Uh, a few countries uh, before, yeah. and what are the hardest part of your work now, mm -hmm. and how do we go further? <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, we, we have created uh, the Resilience and Sustainability Trust uh, in response of a demand from the membership for the IMF to support structural transformation as well as uh, to help countries with uh, the, challenge, the new challenges that have emerged, like pandemic uh, preparedness. At this point, the uh, demand is primarily for structural transformation to, uh, to adapt to climate change and to take the green, green transition uh, forward. Uh, we have already uh, completed uh, uh, arrangements for five countries. Uh, this is uh, uh, quite remarkable, given that uh, uh, just slightly over a year ago, mm -hmm. that was just a dream. <laughs> now mm -hmm. we have it, and we have five countries uh, crossing the uh, finish line. Uh, we have about 44 countries that have expressed interest. So our, when, you, when you ask me about what is your top priority, our top priority is to uh, gear up working in partnership with the World Bank and others on policy programs to move faster in responding to this very strong uh, demand. Uh, I want to tell you very clearly, we have no intention to be uh, a, um, uh, unprudent. We want to do meaningful programs with countries, and that means that uh, uh, we might have to, might, we might have to uh, stage the, the response to these requests. In terms of funding, uh, we got uh, uh, pledges for $40 billion, uh, and actually today we got some additional uh, pledges, meaning that there is a very good likelihood that we can build it even, uh, even further in terms of financial uh, strength. The uh, uh, critical issue is how the fund can de uh, deploy its core expertise which is in macro policies, fiscal policy, monetary policy, uh, structural uh, reforms, to that particular topic of resilience to climate shocks and uh, advancing the green uh, transition. And I am uh, uh, very uh, optimistic that uh, uh, we would see programs uh, that actually do help countries in, in that regard. Uh, my. Uh, to my final point on, this, uh, on the question of the RST is that uh, uh, it is uh, an instrument best deployed in collaboration with others. And this is why we work very closely with the World Bank in particular, but also with the regional development banks, so we can enhance the impact uh, through, through collaboration. Wonderful. I know many of you have questions, but unfortunately, um, this will have to conclude our press briefing. Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, two housekeeping issues. The transcript will be available later today on imf.org. If you have any questions, please reach out to our media relations team. And finally, we look very much forward to seeing you all in Marrakesh. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.